attack. Tonight marks the start of a new weekly edition to The Loop. It's called The Loop One-on-One, where we go in-depth with a single guest covering the issues that matter the most. Tonight's guest is John Hargrave from prank site Zug.com, one of the oldest, oldest and largest prank sites. Now, this year they pulled off their biggest stunt by sneaking past security and pranking the Super Bowl, or so they claim. It was the biggest prank in history, and you never heard about it. A few days after the Aquagate bomb scare in Boston, a team from Zug.com sneaked into Super Bowl 41 to pull a prank of their own. Posing as reporters, the pranksters smuggled 95 boxes past federal marshals and Homeland Security officials that guarded Dolphin Stadium. Your souvenir Prince Party Pack. Enjoy the show. During the second quarter of the Super Bowl, the team distributed thousands of party packs to an entire section of the stadium. Each packet contained a light-up necklace and a set of instructions. By turning on the necklace during the halftime show, fans thought they'd be spelling out Prince's name. Instead, they spelled a secret message that led to Zug.com. So why haven't you heard about it? Well, Zug claims that the media is trying to cover it up. Did six pranksters pull one of the biggest stunts of all time? Or is the joke on us? Hold up your flashlights. It's the loop. All right, folks, joining us tonight via satellite from Massachusetts, John Hargrave, the chief prankster from Zug.com and the author of Prank the Monkey, the Zug Book of Pranks. John, welcome to The Loop. Thank you for joining us, sir. Now, Hi, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure, man. I mean, for those who don't know, Zug.com, I mean, it's, it's a prank site, but I think when people think of pranks these days, they think of like Ashton Kutcher jumping out of a, a trash can or someone putting scorpions yeah, like on Steve-O's ass. Brainless practical jokes is what you're trying to say, it's, Kevin. No, it's exactly, it's exactly what I'm saying, but that's not what people find on Zug.com, right? That's right. We really specialize in large-scale, massively orchestrated pranks and media hoaxes. We are the masters of pranking, as you said. Our new book, Prank the Monkey, outlines dozens of these pranks that we've pulled over the years. And now the Super Bowl stunt, I mean, it's by far the biggest thing you guys have ever done, but we're all still trying to figure out exactly why you took such huge risks with this prank. I mean, you have a kid and a wife that you said, hey, listen, I might not ever see you again. I mean, was, I mean, was it just a publicity stunt or was there really like an underlying message to this, entire, to this entire prank? Yeah, well, I think that's the difference between a prank and a practical joke is a prank really tries to make a deeper point. And in this case, Kevin, the point that we were trying to make is that uh, we can't be safe from the terrorists. There's no such thing as true safety. When four comedians and a cameraman can break into the most heavily guarded national security event in history, we're never going to be safe. You can't be. And we Americans love the illusion of security, but it's just an illusion. Now, and, and, and that argument has, of course, been raised, but some people would answer that, John, by saying, you really didn't pose a threat, though. You did everything on the up and up. You were completely legit. You guys used your real names. Your van was x-rayed. You know, there were bomb-sniffing dogs. You were, you were interviewed. So rather than, you know, the only thing you really didn't do was ask permission to do it. You didn't actually pose a threat. Had your van had a bomb in it, it probably would have been stopped, no? Yeah, well, I uh, do think that the Homeland Security people did everything that they possibly could. They were fantastic. They were very professional, thorough, and buttoned up. But at the end of the day, we had media credentials, and uh, that was the loophole that we used to really get through. I think that all the terrorists really need is a good-looking media badge, and they're home free. Right. Maybe a Bluetooth headset and a stick mic and a cameraman, and, and they can get into anywhere. <laughs> Now, so that's right. I have, my, uh, I have my five secret rules for getting into any most tightly guarded security event anywhere. It's uh, wear a suit, wear a Bluetooth headset, uh, pretend to be talking on the phone loudly, uh, and uh, carry a clipboard, and uh, be white. <laughs> yes, that, that, that certainly helps in, with today's security, unfortunately. But now, I have to ask you this, though. Uh, you know, aside from proving the point, you and your site have a history of pranking everyone, from major corporations yeah. to the Massachusetts Turnpike Authority, which I thought was great. But <laughs> right. in the past, though, John, right. you've also pranked the media itself. So besides the blog post and the Rever video, what reason do we have to actually believe that you did this? I mean, I watched the Super Bowl in high def. I certainly didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, well, I think that... Uh any reasonably intelligent person who goes to the site and watches that video closely will come to the conclusion that there's no way that we could have uh, made this whole thing a hoax. It would cost more 
to do the hoax than it would cost to actually do the thing in real life. Kevin, don't make me get all Occam's razor on your ass, all right? The simplest I, I, look, solution I'm, is usually the solution. Oh, I'm just saying, a little Photoshop work, maybe a trip to Kinko's and a buddy who has access to a warehouse could have actually produced that Rever video, John. But I will give you the benefit of the doubt because where, where you succeed is that you've done many pranks in the past, and so on good faith alone, you guys deserve to be trusted on this. So that leads you, to the next you would question. Think that the media, you would think that the media would put an investigative journalist on this to, I don't know, investigate? Right. Well, that, and that's, that's yeah. my next question, is that, is that if this was real, John, why hasn't it exploded? Why isn't it all over CNN and the New York Times? Why is it just now being discussed on the loop here on Attack of the Show? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, the media are like lemmings. You know this. Uh, Kevin, and they kind of need to be told that a story is big before they believe it. And uh, but now that I'm on attack of the show, I can. Oh, hang on, sorry. Is, uh, is the hello? Uh, it always hi. happens. Uh, hey, it always Katie. Happens. Hi, it's it's Katie Couric. Oh, John, let's let's wrap it yeah. up before you get to the Matt Lowers right. of the world, because I still have okay. 30 seconds with you. All right, I gotta go, Kevin. <laughs> okay, okay, I gotta go. Thanks, bye. All right, John, let's let's Katie play the hindsight game. Katie wants to know uh, where you get your hair done, Kevin. It's, uh, it, it's, it's an industry uh, trade secret. I'm sorry. I can't expose okay. that to her. Uh, final question to you, sir, which, uh, first of all, hats off to you because it was an amazing hack. I truly believe that you did it. But looking back, hindsight right. here, what would you have done differently, if anything? Uh, I probably would have brought a poncho because it was raining heavily, and they charged like 10 bucks for those things. Can you imagine that, Kevin? Ten bucks for a glorified trash bag? Is I, that I crazy? can't. I can't. Well, you're at the Super Bowl. But really, is that it? You, you would have brought a little protection from the rain? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Super Bowl, the biggest ripoff in history. They overcharge for everything. All right, John, I want to thank you again for coming on and, and joining us in the loop today. And, and best of luck with the book and, and future pranks, which I'm, I'm sure are coming very soon. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. All right, then, folks, the silver lining in all this controversy is knowing that, you know what, freedom of the press still does exist. I mean, maybe you don't believe everything that you hear from the NBC, Universal, General Electric Corporation, but you can be rest assured that on the Internet, at least, the truth will eventually break free. And whether or not that truth involves a masked media conglomerate that buried the story or that a website played an ingenious prank on the media, eventually that truth will come out. Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7, only on G4.